Hi everyone, I'm Denise Rose of the Happy Vegan Couple. If this is your first time with me, I'd just like to share with you that along with my husband Georgie, we like to help people transition from eating animal-based and processed food diets to one of whole plant foods. That is our passion. And we try to help you by doing a couple different things. We have a YouTube channel and a Facebook page under the name Happy Vegan Couple, and we produce cooking videos of whole food plant-based recipes that are delicious and, and healthy for you with step-by-step -step instructions. So you can find that on our YouTube channel. Uh, we also teach classes in Tucson, Arizona on eating plants, and we're doing plant-based transition stories because I've decided we should talk to those people who have made that transition and learn from them and get inspired by them and hear what their challenges are and their successes because I think it will help more of us be able to make that journey. So I'm so excited to share with you today my interview with a woman from California named Esther Loveridge. And, and the most exciting thing to me about this interview before we actually get into the talk is that Esther made her transition when she was 72 years old. Yes, I just said 72. So four years ago. And she has had some major successes with her transition. Uh, she's had a major weight loss. She's been off medication some as long as she was taking them for like 30 years. And, uh, and Esther likes to say it's never too late right, to make a healthy lifestyle change. And I think she's a shining example of that. And what's also interesting about her story is that when she first started her transition, her husband, Ben, who she's been with for more than three decades, he didn't really want to join her. Like, oh, I don't know if I want to eat that way. But along the way, he changed his mind. And we'll hear a little bit about that too, and the successes and uh, challenges that Ben also experienced. So before I bring her on, I just want to share with you some of her uh, pictures from before and after because they're just so great where you can see this wonderful uh, transformation that actually they both made. So here you see uh, Esther and Ben, they like to cruise and, and that's uh, they're standing with one of the workers of the boat. And uh, you can see uh, them in 2010, and that's what they were looking at. They both did have some excess weight on them. And then this is a picture that was actually May. I wrote July, but I found out that I was wrong. It was May 2016, four years ago. I believe they were in Scotland in front of a castle. And this was just soon before Esther decided she was gonna make this transition change. So let me show you now what Ben and her look like four years later. Look at that. Don't they look just stunning? I just love how they look. And yeah, I just show you the kind of the, the three pictures again. I, I'm sorry, my picture might be over Ben right now if you're seeing it that way. But there's the transition. Yeah, the middle picture four years ago till now. So I'm gonna bring Esther on and we are going to hear her story I'm going to unmute her because uh, I had her muted. And Esther, are you there? I'm here. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to share your story today. So what I'd like to start with is maybe a little bit of your backstory. So before you actually started your transition to whole food plant-based eating, if you could tell us a little bit about like what your life was like prior you know, you did have a lot of weight on you, you know, what that was like for you. And uh, why don't we just start with that? What was life like for you back then? Okay, well, as you mentioned, Ben and I do love to travel and we have been all over the world and we carried our weight pretty well. I mean, there were times when I couldn't climb the wall, the Great Wall in China. And when we were in Ireland, I couldn't climb up to kiss the Barney Stone. There were some limitations, but basically, you know, we managed pretty well. Uh, but on that trip to Ireland, on the way home, I just, my knees and my feet just came to a stop. And uh, I was in the airport trying to pull my luggage to get to the gate. And I just thought I can't even take another step. You know, I got through the tour fine by taking a hot bath every night and soaking and relaxing and getting renewed. But that day I was, I don't remember being afraid 
but I was concerned because in September we had a trip planned to China and I thought I can't go with my knees this way so I have to do something but I didn't know what at that point so it wasn't until um, that was in May of 2016 and we managed to go to Universal Studios down in Hollywood for my granddaughter's graduation and um, that was not as much fun because I was too fat to go on some of the rides, but there were plenty of places to rest. So we got through that okay. But then in July, then I went to see the doctor and that's when he dropped the bomb on me and said that my knees were almost bone on bone and I could either take injections or continue to take pain medication or he could refer me to orthopedics. And I love having choices in life. I mean, I don't like being caught. And so I thought, well, maybe I have a choice. But then he said, you have to lose 70 pounds before I can even refer you. Wow. And, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do until. Yeah. Well, let me just say, so I, it's like a lot of people, I think when they have excess weight experience joint pains, it must yeah. be quite hard, you know, for all that weight on your joints. So, yes. yeah, it's a frightening situation. Yes, and not knowing how or if it was going to stop. And travel was really important to both of us, you know, so I didn't want my life to end then. Right. So, okay, so how did you get even this thought about whole food plant-based? Because had you ever been thinking about that before? No. No? no, I didn't even know anything about plant-based. I didn't know anything about being vegan or a vegetarian. Or, I mean, I knew people who had, through their church, become vegetarians, but that's all I knew about that. I didn't really know what veganism was, and I certainly didn't know what whole food plant-based was. But the, the miracle of it all was my girlfriend was doing some research to find out how she could cure her diabetes or free diabetes and she came across Neil Bernard's book. And in that research process, she came up with Dr. McDougall's Maximum Weight Loss book. John and McDougall, uh-huh. Yeah, and she just knew that was the book for me and she gave it to me. I had no clue what it was, but that changed my life forever. Wow, so like, so she gives you this book and it's starting to tell you, eat plants, don't eat animals, don't eat dairy, don't eat eggs, don't eat oil, right? Because that is what the McDougal maximum right. weight loss, maybe don't eat avocados and nuts, right? Yeah, right. And so what, what was your first thought? Because like you said, you had never really thought about this before. Like, how did you process that? Well, I had been on, like so many fat people, obese people, I had been on so many different diets and they all worked because I do know how to diet. I mean, I have the kind of personality that once I start, I'm gonna follow it because I want the results. But the problem is none of those were sustainable. So I knew intuitively, and I just come off of a high fat diet and I love that because I could eat all the fat I wanted. So was that actually was a keto diet? Well, were you trying was, to be in ketosis? Yeah. Well, yes, yes, it yeah. was by a doctor's name, but anyway, yeah. yes. Like the so, Adelaide like Atkins type. Yes, of exactly. Yeah. 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 And I had done that very well, you know, because at one time I'd been 282 and then I was down to 257. But there always comes that time when you just can't take it anymore or you go off. So when I read this, I just, I didn't even question that I'd be giving all those things up. It was just a matter of diving in and having it be an experiment. And I thought, if I can do it 100%, I will test this program and see if it works. And if it does, I'm gonna give him the credit. So I just dove into it. And oh, so let, let me just stop you for a second. So you get this book, you look at it, and this is like really impressive to me. You really just looked at it, you read it, and you go, I'm gonna do this. Right. Like it's somebody exciting. else might have said, Nah, I don't think so. That's not for me. Well, I did have a doc. I did have a doctor that was like that because I went to see him uh, after I had gotten the book, and I told him I wanted to do that. And I'll never forget his response. He said, "If I told people to eat like that, they would say it's not real food." And then he went on to say, "Besides, there are no health food stores in our area." Oh no. 
And I'm not one to come back, but I did that day and I said, you don't need a health food store. All you need is a produce department. Yes. Yes. And so needless to say, that was the last time I saw that doctor. Right. Wow. Smart move. And, I, yeah, and that's yeah. not an uncommon situation as I, I know you know now, you know, you're immersed in this in this community and you know the doctors don't learn this and so they they and they don't have time and they they're all eating the other way anyways themselves right so, uh, so. yeah i'd like to make an appointment and go back and see him yes and show you what you look like <laughs> now yeah. and, what, yeah. what and, and i'd also like to thank him because what if he had referred me to orthopedics in spite of my excess weight because there are other people who were at least as heavy as i was and somehow their doctors referred them and they had knee replacements, which can cause other problems too. So I was really fortunate that he said that and that my friend gave me the book and I decided to believe in it and put it to the test. Yes, yes. So, okay, so let's start talking about that transformation then. So it sounds like you just kind of dove in rather than like a yeah. slow incremental approach. You were I working was, an overnight was, approach, tell us. Yeah, it was overnight. I mean, I knew I couldn't play with it and have it be a test. So I had to, you know, just go buy it. And so uh, I did say to my husband, who, as we've discussed, was not plant-based at that time. And, you know, sometimes when you go on a diet, this hasn't really happened with me, but with a lot of people, you go on a diet and then you expect your family to come along with you and go along with it. And after you've done that 25 to 50 times in your life, you feel like you're calling wolf, you know, and it's just one more time. Oh yeah, here she goes again, right? And, but I did say to Ben, I said, would you do me a favor? Would you promise me that you won't bring sweets into the house? I mm -hmm. said, I can handle all the other stuff, but you know, would you support me that way? And he said, yes, and he did. So that was a kickstart and I had his support even though he said I could never eat like you. And I, did, I was able to let it go and I just said, okay. And he does like to cook. So he just continued making meals. He was doing most of them anyway. And then I just fixed what I needed for my program, you know, and just let him, he was still eating, you know, ham and eggs with cheese on top for breakfast and all that, but that wasn't tempting to me. So yeah, so I just started doing my own thing. And then I started over time, I'd say to him, are you gonna use this product? And he'd say, no. I said, okay, can I throw it out? So. <laughs> After about nine months, I think, then he saw my success and he, he came to a neat realization. He, as much as he thought he liked meat, it was really the condiments that he liked. And we started thinking about it, you know, how it wasn't the roast beef. It was the roast beef with uh, tart with, um, what do you call it? Horseradish sauce. Right, or, or barbecue with barbecue sauce, right? Exactly. I think you're bringing up like a really important point, which yeah. is, for, I mean, I've heard this a lot, you know, for a lot of people, the meat, they, they flavor it, right? With sweet right. things or spicy things or, you know, right, it's the flavor. And we can certainly bring that into plant foods. Yes, right. And the other thing was we had meat in the freezer and he wanted to use that up first. <laughs> and that was kind of his thinking at the time. So that was fine. But it, it was, um, it was, it was, and then the, I started right away, I think getting rid of the toxins in my body, it was like right away, it seemed like I started losing inches in my, in my knees. And I was so glad that I did take my measurements because it's just one additional tool we can use at the beginning to see how sometimes we lose inches before we lose pounds. Yeah. And so, That's so we, exciting. Yeah, so we went on to China in September and I did take some pain medication in case because my doctor said, well, take it just in case you do want to have a good time. But it was, it was so quickly that I started feeling really good. In fact, this week I ran across the picture that I took just a month after I started the diet and I thought I looked so much better after one month. You know, now when I look back at the picture, I see my rolls around my stomach and everything, but just within a short time, you start feeling better, and it's just so powerful. It, isn't it amazing? And you would like, you just would never have known it if you hadn't no. made this change. So no. <clears throat> let's talk about some of the, you know, the foods that you transitioned to, you know, how you started that. So maybe you could kind of talk about like 
you know, what you used to eat for breakfast, lunch or dinner or snacks and like how you've changed that. So give people a sense of, you know, what that was like. You know, it's kind of hard almost to remember how I used to eat. But for a long time, Ben and I were sales reps and we were on the road. So we were just eating out at restaurants every night mm. and sometimes for lunch. So it might have been the standard American diet, but with desserts and with really good food and lots of it and bread and butter and, you know, potatoes with all the sour cream and chives and that whole thing and steak when we felt like we wanted to splurge and or lots of tacos or enchiladas and uh, we liked uh, salads too and some soups, but mostly it was a lot of um, pasta dishes too. And, um, and for breakfast, I don't remember, I, I know he was eating, you know, th maybe three eggs and cheese and um, making omelets and stuff. But right away I switched over to having oatmeal for breakfast and uh, I didn't put like almonds or, or raisins or anything, but just that. And sometimes I think at the beginning, I might have used some almond milk. Now I don't even need that. But what's exciting is that when you change, um, when you change how you eat, then that's what you crave. You know, we crave what we eat. So when I look back, it was just really the standard, except that once in a while he would say, I'm going to the store. Do you want me to bring you some Ben and Jerry's ice cream? And I thought, well, yeah, I'm trying to cut back, but, you know, and then when he'd bring it home, I'd hope that he didn't even want to bite because I'm a self-described food addict. And so mm. I would eat the whole thing in one setting. And if we did have candy around the house, I'd want to eat it all because then it would be gone, you know? So it wasn't that we ate so terribly. Well, now when I look back, it was, but at the time it was just, you know, all the food that's available and pizza and right and know. it's what everybody eats around right. you right and what you see on tv and right. you know you go to the movie theater candy and you know junk this junk that right it's like normal yeah, yeah and going to buffets you know there there's so much and it's free once you pay the price to get in so you want to get your money's worth right so you load up your plate and all that abundance you know before yeah. you know so like you trend, so when you said you, you know, started eating oatmeal, which form of oatmeal did you start to eat? Because you know, you can get it in different types. Yeah, I, I did steel cut. Okay, yeah. so that's good. So you actually, I always talk about like the hier hierarchy of grains yes. as we get to closer to intact. So steel cut is just one step down from oat groats, right. which is the most intact. So you're right. up there though, which is much better than like, you're not getting the oatmeal in the little packets. No, you know, no, no. It's thin yeah. and it's usually got sugar in it, you know, so you're eating the good stuff. Right, right. Yeah, we did that. And then, you know, I don't remember, uh, but I, I really got into the potatoes and the beans and rice, you know, and, uh, and all the vegetables. And on the McDougal program, uh, I was limited to two fruits a day, so I didn't overdo on the fruit. But the results were so steady and so good. And uh, I did a little a goal setting and I put a little sticker on my computer and it said I wanted in one year I wanted to lose 70 pounds become more agile and I wanted to get off all my medication and I wanted my eyesight to improve why I thought of that I don't know but that's later on in the story uh -huh. so, so yeah so let's talk, I still want to talk a little bit more about the food that you eat because you know, again, somebody who's like still eating your kind of typical diet, they just don't really know what you're doing throughout the day. So, okay, okay so let's just talk a little bit more about this. So like when you eat your breakfast now with your oatmeal, do you, do you add anything with the oatmeal? Well, a lot of times now I've evolved to a new place where it's, it doesn't have to be oatmeal anymore. It's whatever's in the refrigerator that's compliant that needs to be eaten. Cause I don't like the waste food. So I came across um, the calorie density chart and uh -huh. I love that because now all I eat is fruit and vegetables and grains and legumes. That is all. I don't want anything out of a package. I don't want anything pre-made. I'm really, as someone said, hardcore. You but, are truly whole plant food. Yes. Yes. And, and I, and, I, and even more recently, I've even tuned it up even more and I hardly use any spices because 
for me, the better food tastes, the more I want of it. You know, and so since I've had a problem of overeating in the past, if the food tastes just fine, it becomes fuel for me instead of an orgasmic experience. Because the higher either the calories or the uh, hit that I get, like, ooh, this is really delicious. Well, I, I don't sometimes know when to stop. Ah. So as long as you're I saying, stick. So you're saying for you, if you'd used a lot of herbs and spices, you might make the flavor profile too much for you that you just want yeah. to consume way more? Yes. Uh -huh. yes. And I found this out because Ben was making uh, vegetable soup after he transitioned and he was using a product called Better Than Bouillon, but right. it's pretty high in salt. And so when he, and then he was also using paste picante sauce in it and sometimes with spaghetti sauce and he made a really good soup. When I made soup for myself, I made it with water and with um, the vegetables and maybe canned tomatoes and maybe tomato paste that didn't have salt. So I really had gotten away from the salt too. But when I ate his soup, it's not that it would have hurt me, but it tasted so much more exciting than mine that I'd want to eat three bowls of it. Instead right, of right, right, right. So you, you felt like you were going to get more calories than you really wanted that day. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Even though the plant foods, as you talked about, the calorie density, I mean, most of these foods are so low in calories, yes. right? Especially that you could really eat quite a bit of the, the non-caloric veggies. Yeah. I think it was fear from my past. Yeah. You know, that if I overate or ate more that, that I would think it was too many calories or think it was too much food, you know? Uh-huh. So, and plus, I kind of like the little zone I'm in now. It just works for me. And the thing is, it's really helped me not be a recipe seeker because I'm just happy with my food. And I don't, it's not like I'm looking for the uh, fountain of youth, not the fountain of youth, but looking for, you know, Nirvana or something, you know, looking for something that's more exciting and always seeking. No, I've backed out from that. I just cook the food I like and I eat it. And you know what I like about what you're saying also is you're talking about a simple way of eating because yes. sometimes when I uh, teach about people how to transition, one of their biggest concerns is like, I don't really like to cook. I don't really want to spend time in the kitchen. And so, you know, they're not sure how to make it happen because, you know, they're maybe used to getting a lot of restaurant food, which isn't going to work because usually that's, as you know, it's now prepared very healthy. There's usually a lot of oil in restaurant food and added sugars and too much salt, right? Same thing right. with buy those packaged foods, you know, which is why I, I, I can understand you not wanting to eat much of that. So um, it, it's hard for people to figure that out. So yeah. let's just talk a little bit more because I really, I want people to get a better picture of mm. how you do things simply. So if you um, could, you know, really spend a little more time sharing okay. with us how you're putting those simple meals together, what satisfies you through the day. And again, um, you know, everybody's different. So some people will, may want to get more involved. They want, may want to do what like Georgie does for us, you know, and why we put these uh, vi cooking videos and Happy Vegan Couple, where you're going to spend a little more time in the kitchen. But you, know, you have a different way, and I'm sure that's going to appeal to some other people. So that's why I want to hear a little bit more of it. Yeah, well, I think that the um, something just happened to your your camera, where we we got. Oh, okay, there you are again. Good. Okay. We're back to you. Um, the thing that it's really neat. I was trying to tutor uh, one of my high school friends, and I was telling her what I did, and she was writing down all of her notes. And then I thought, you know, why don't I just type up what became my beginner's manual? And so it was just really neat how this all came into being. And so what I explained is that I eat those four food groups, you know, fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. Okay, and then there are staples that I keep on hand all the time. There's potatoes, sweet potatoes, beans, rice, and oatmeal. So I have those on hand. So to make a meal, I just pull one of those things out of the refrigerator, and then I also have fresh greens and fresh vegetables and fresh fruit and add whatever I want from that. And that makes a meal in about one or two minutes in the microwave. Wow. So I, do, I do batch cooking. So I have all of the, a bounty of this always made up. So I never have to think about, oh, I don't have anything ready made, you know. 
So give me an example before we go on about like how you do your batch. Like okay. when is your batch day? What is Esther gonna cook in okay. larger quantities? I would go to I would go to probably a big store and buy big bags and, and it's usually organic, but I, I'm not a real fussy person about that. But I'll go to Costco and get a big bag of you know potatoes and sweet potatoes and carrots and green beans and broccoli and uh, Brussels sprouts and uh, whatever else is big like that, you know, and so I have those in the fridge. So when I do my batch cooking, I'll put maybe 15 potatoes in the microwave with a cup of hot water, set the timer for 15 minutes and it's done. So then I have a big batch of potatoes. Sweet potatoes, I prefer to do in the oven. So I'll do a big tray of sweet potatoes at 400 for an hour and they just come out wonderful. And like how and, many are you making at a time? Oh, it might be 10. Oh, 10 wow. Sweet 10 sweet potatoes, maybe 15 regular potatoes. And then when it comes to beans, I just recently um, found a new way of doing beans. In fact, I do beans and rice together and I love it. And people in my Esther's Nutritional Journey are loving it too. I put two cups of beans and it can be any kind of beans, pinto or gambanza or I use my acoba. So two cups of beans and one cup of brown rice and eight cups of water and I put in two tablespoons of Costco's taco seasoning, but you could use anything. And I set the timer before I go to bed uh, for 45 minutes, go to bed. When I wake up in the morning, it's all ready. I mean, it's just- Now, is this creamy. in a crock pot or an instant pot? Or how is instant, it made? Instant pot. I, I cook, I make everything in the instant pot. And so that's all ready. So sometimes I'll have that for breakfast, you know? And, um, and then, like I say, then, even like when I get, and then I like to go to the farmer's market too and get fresh fruits and vegetables there. And I'm learning to eat you know, the, like the beet greens and so forth. But back to those staples. And then when I make my oatmeal, I make eight servings at a time and put it into a, and, and I've kind of evolved now to where I put in some flaxseed as well, but originally seeds were not allowed. And I'll put in maybe a cup of, uh, no, see, a, a half a cup of flaxseeds to eight servings. And then I spread it out in a plastic uh, container. And um, then when it cools, I cut it up into eight bars, you might say, like we used to do Rice Krispies. And then that's eight servings. So if Ben and I are both going through a phase where we are eating the oatmeal, it lasts four days. But if only one of us is doing it, obviously it lasts eight days. So when it comes time for breakfast, if I want oatmeal that day, I just scoop out one eighth of that pan full and add a little water to it and stick it in the microwave for one minute, 11 seconds. That's because then, then you can just hit the button, one, 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 you know, and heat it up. And then if I want to use my fruit at breakfast, I might put some blueberries on it, or we have an abundance of pomegranate seeds, or Ben likes to put bananas on his, whatever fruit I want to use. And then, uh, or sometimes I'll say, you know, I want to save my fruit till later. And uh, then I put some cinnamon on the oatmeal and then I kind of got into putting turmeric on it just so I got uh -huh. a little turmeric in. A little so anti-inflammatory anti spice? I guess so. I, I didn't really know the science behind oh, it. Yeah. We met an Indian couple on a cruise and then they had us for a dinner and she gave me a bag of it. So I just started using it without okay, well, really. Let me just see, um, to make sure you know this one tip. Um, did because the way you make turmeric even more powerful for your body is you add a little black pepper to it when you consume the turmeric. So I don't know if you know that, like even Costco now, they sell a turmeric a powder spice and they actually have some black pepper in there. So oh, really? really? Increases, yeah, it really increases the bioavailability of the turmeric, which of course oh. we want the benefits, you know, right. of all those phytochemicals, right, in our plants. Yeah. Yeah. Next time you throw some turmeric on that oatmeal, throw a little black pepper and you'll get okay. a pepper vein. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah, I had heard about the pepper, but I hadn't psychologically got to the point where I thought pepper on oatmeal sounded good. Yeah, well, but, yeah. So, so what anyway. we do in our house is actually I, I take, um, I put a, like a teaspoon of turmeric in a little shot glass and I uh -huh. put black pepper and then I put in a little water or, or tea or non-dairy milk and heat it up and then I drink it that way. That's how uh, I do my turmeric with black pepper. <laughs> yeah. So as long as I had the refrigerator full of, you know, potatoes, sweet potatoes and, and uh, you know, the oatmeal and uh, beans and rice, you know, I'm good to go. I and mean, that's my, that's my insurance. 
that right. I have. And, and that's kind of like, I view it as my meat, you know, like a potato or beans and rice is my meat. And then I can build around that. Right, right. And of course your beans, your legumes, they have good protein in it, even though everything has protein in the plant world, but some things have more protein than others. So legumes is of course a nice uh, way of getting that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about like, is there a part of the day when uh, you might be eating like a large salad? <clears throat> something like that? It kind of comes and goes. In the winter time, we were doing more soups. I call it dump soup, where I start, like I mentioned, with some uh, canned tomatoes and tomato paste and a lot of water. And then I just start emptying my refrigerator before the vegetables go bad. And then sometimes I put in like a Mrs. Dash, no salt seasoning, or Costco has a no salt seasoning. I, I can put that in there. And that makes a big pot of soup. And Ben finds that he eats more vegetables if we have soup. But I, I do like salads too, but sometimes I make them so big, it takes me 45 minutes to an hour to eat them. And um, so I kind of go in spurts. So right. if somebody looks at like every day I post what I eat, I post pictures of it in my group so people can see how simple it can be. You know, it doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to have a lot of ingredients in your house. You know, it's just, so simple and I like to plate my food so that when people look at it they say oh that's a potato or that's a sweet potato or that's you know green beans or that's broccoli or that's a fruit you know and you can see what I'm eating the whole food by looking at my plate it's right. not a combination of things so yeah do when when you do have salads do you typically use a salad dressing or do you eat it oh, without it? Yeah. Do you eat it I sometimes I use just balsamic vinegar but I, I learned this from Jane Esselstyn, but I kind of changed it a little bit. I call it my three, two, one salad dressing. And I use three parts balsamic vinegar, two parts Dijon mustard, and one part um, lemon juice or orange juice. Because one time I ran out of lemon juice, so I thought, well, maybe orange juice would work. So that's my three, two, one simple recipe. And I just put it in a squirt bottle. And if somebody wants to try it, you can use a tablespoon as your measurement and use you know, three tablespoons of balsamic, two of the Dijon mustard, and only one of lemon juice to see if you even like it. And then once you like it, you can go up to maybe a, a quarter cup being your measurement. Yeah. Uh -huh. you know? And then I put it in a squirt bottle and keep it in the door of the refrigerator and just squirt that on. Uh -huh. there's no, no extra salt and there's no oil, no sugar. Right, right. And, I, that's what I noticed, yes, yes. Uh -huh. All all McDougal compliant for the yeah, right. weight loss. Yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, what about, you know, what, those times when, you know, you feel like, you know, you want a little sweet or a little treat, I, or maybe you don't even have that feeling anymore. I mean, does that come yeah. up for you? And if so, how do you do it the, either the whole food plant-based way? Well, sometimes I've realized that when I have that feeling, what I'm really in is maybe dehydrated. So I'll always start with, try to start with water, but I don't really get those cravings anymore. In fact, I even gave up coffee because I was so excited about finding this way of redoing my life that I didn't need the coffee to get me higher. I had all the energy I needed, so, uh -huh. so I gave that up. But sweets, I just, I, I just don't want to go there, you know, and I don't want any sweet substitutes. Um, I have sometimes allowed myself this is after I'd lost my weight, I allowed myself to have two dates. And I would really take my time eating them and enjoy them and be mindful about it. But, um, and I've always had a big sweet tooth. So, um, but I don't know, I guess I just crave the good healthy food. And I just see anything that mimics what I used to like as being a danger zone. Right. So I, I feel like I've been totally delivered from food addiction. And from all the things that drew me so much that I, I don't even want to mimic it. Right. I, don't want, I don't even want vegan food that tastes like meat. I don't want vegan ice cream. I don't want, I don't want anything that tastes like cheese. You know, I just don't want to. My, I tell my tongue, I said, you know, for 72 years, you ruled me. And you're on restriction now. So <laughs> just remember, you're not going to go back. I love it so so tell me, like, if you were able to say, you know, with the way you eat now, and you were going to say, oh, I really want to have this. I just, oh, I just can't wait to have this. Or maybe it's like, you know, you're thinking of something special. What would that be? 
Well, it might be Chinese food, or it, I think um, I love Mexican food too, um, but I don't do tortillas, so uh, I can put it in a bowl, but, but that's compliant. I mean, you know, my beans and rice and spices, so there's really nothing that I want to entertain in my mind. If that thought comes to my mind, I just say, you know, that's, that's a downward spiral to even, even try to find the substitute. So, um, yeah, I, I guess. Just, I mean, you're just happy eating what, you know, you're eating. Yeah. yeah, I am. I'm totally happy and I'm free. I'm free of all that addiction. I'm, I mean, I can't explain. I, I try to tell my family, I said, I feel as free from my past as if I had been a drug addict. And I don't think very many drug addicts or even alcoholics say, oh, I wish I could have a Mai Tai or I wish I could have a glass of wine every night. I mean, if you've been scared, my brother was an alcoholic by the time he was 21. Mm -hmm. And he was so adamant that if we went to a restaurant, he even asked if they put wine in the soup. Even wow. though the alcohol's cooked out, he was that concerned. Yeah. And so I've kind of adopted that too. And I just say, it's not worth it. You know, and I think as long as you obsess about that or you think about it, see, I, this is phrase I use too. What we think about, we bring about. And I think that's so true. And if people meditate on what they wish they had, or if they give thought or give energy to what they miss, pretty soon they're going to go get it because they're giving that power. Right. Yeah. Did, so, um, <clears throat> Let's see, I, I had a question in my mind, uh, and it was about food. Um, oh, I know, you made a comment a moment ago that you know you don't eat tortillas, and uh, uh, maybe you could share with us you know, what the reason is that you're like kind of skipping that kind of food. I, I, I think I, have a, I know why, but I'd like to hear it from you, you know, about why that type of food you know, is kind of off the program for you. And I just want to remember, you're doing maximum weight loss. That was your, because you have excess weight and you really wanted to slim down to what you are. So you were, you know, doing the kind of the, you know, more restrictive way of whole foods to make that weight loss happen faster. And so, right. that, you know, maybe you could just share a little bit about the, that flour issue. Okay. Um, the main reason is because it's processed. And so I, my motto is, if it's made in a plant, I don't want it. If it is a plant, I want it. Ah. So that, that's the criteria that separates the two. Now, have I had any tortillas in the last four years? Yes. But I think it was a couple of months ago after I'd lost all my weight, we found these uh, tortillas, like tostados, and they didn't have any added oil, and they looked really good. And so then I started putting mashed avocado on it, and someone in my group commented, oh, you're eating avocado now? And I say, well, yes, because I've been at goal weight for over six months, and I can start adding back in a little bit of avocado, nuts, and seeds. Um, but I realized, I counted up how many times that month I had that as an entree, that was nine. So I could see where, you know, anytime that processed food, it has stuff in it, or it, it tastes so much better than my average food that I'm drawn to it. So as I mentioned earlier, I just want to stick to those four food groups, which is fruit, vegetables, grains, and legumes, and a tortilla and chips and all that other stuff is not that. Right, so and you know, and I know that um, a lot of when our doctors lecture the, in the whole food plant based community, uh, you know, they'll make a comment about if you're really trying to lose weight, uh, eating foods with flour is not as healthy for you as eating an intact grain like the rice. Yes. So, you know, so the example would be, you know, we make in our house wheat berries, which yeah. is the intact grain of the wheat. Uh, and that would be in your program. But when you're eating the, when you take that wheat, you make it into flour, you get quicker digestion. That's the problem. It goes yes. through your body much quicker. You get a blood sugar spike, you get a little insulin spike. And when you, when you get those insulin spikes, it puts more weight on your body. So that's really, you know, part of the program of not doing the flour and, and, you know, yes, it's processed and not, it's not as uh, healthy for your body to, yes. you know, digest yeah that's a good explanation thanks yeah yeah so i'm just curious yeah uh, you know you you you're talking about this like 
it really wasn't any big deal for you, you know, at 72, making this major change, you found this way of doing it. Is, is that really what it was? I mean, d did you not have challenges or have we just not uh, talked about them yet? No, we, I think within, uh, let's say I've been on this program for about 15 months and we took a 50 day cruise. I mean, that's a long time to be yes. on a ship, right? And I found out that the ship had um, vegan, not necessarily, yeah, they had vegan or vegetarian or no gluten menu. And so that worked out really well because every night I could choose what I wanted to eat the next night. You had to pre-order a day in advance, but I could use that menu as a guide. And sometimes I would have a salad that had some cashews on it. So I was like going off a little bit with the nuts, you know, but it was still vegan and um, I went with that. And then uh, for breakfast, I talked to the waiters there and I would get them to bring me steel cut oatmeal. And then I, at one time, or sometimes when I really wanted a treat, I'd say, can you give me a handful of walnuts? You know, that would be like a really big treat. And then um, through the, and then I, I got to where they would blanch my vegetables for me rather than taking them off the line. So we learned how to, um, ask for what we wanted and make it work. And then I met the Tai Chi instructor and she had a partner who was, they were visiting their own program. And he was talking about not mixing, uh, what was it, meat and dairy or something like that. And I said, well, I, said, I do it entirely different. First of all, I don't do dairy. But when I explained my program to him, he said, well, if I get a, if I get a group of people from our Tai Chi class together on the ship, would you be willing to talk to them? And I said, well, yeah, I guess so. So we met in the cocktail lounge and he had his video camera and said, well, can I videotape it? And I said, well, okay. And then he said, well, can I put it on YouTube? <laughs> well, this was, you know, like three years ago. And I said, oh, I guess it's okay. So it's on YouTube as Esther Loveridge's drastic weight loss secret. Wow, and this was like a year into, a year into yes. it for you, right? Yeah, right. And so that was kind of, uh, my coming out party, you might say. I mean, I hadn't really thought about doing that, but uh, but he was impressed and they stayed in touch with me. And so it was really nice being able to talk to people about how you can manage uh, being on the ship, you know, and uh -huh. and since then we've been, we've been to India and Bhutan and Nepal and we've been to Croatia and we've just, wow. we've, we've really found some good deals and taken advantage of us. So you can imagine this COVID thing is really tying our hands, but. And I'm really impressed, you know, because <clears throat> some people probably would feel, well, it may be really hard to travel and be able to stay on the program and do what I want, but you're, you know, you found out that you can do it. Yes. It's not, yes. A, it's not a deterrent. No, it, it's, it's tempting though, because you're, you're, you don't have the clean environment that you have at home, mm -hmm. you know, so the things are there. And I remember one day I did have a cookie and then I thought I need two or three more. And then that had to be the end of that because right. I could see where that was not working well. And then one night I almost ordered escargot. And then I thought, what am I thinking? That's animal and that's butter, you know, but I used to like it. And, uh, and then for dessert, I made, you know, it's all what you give power to because for dessert, I would have papaya or mango or a bowl of berries. And then when you eat it, just cherish it and, let, let your mouth taste it and, and just make it a big deal, you know, uh -huh, right. just as much as I would have cheesecake with sour cream on top. But, so, uh, you, but besides the travel though, did, you didn't really feel like it was all that challenging, you know, when you were in your home and you started this and, you know, over that, you know, first, or, I mean, getting into it? Not in my home because uh, I had listened to Chef AJ and she said, if it's in your house, it will be in your mouth. So this is kind of a funny story. I went to Seas Candy, which used to be my favorite, to get some candy for a friend back in Virginia because she couldn't get it back there. Right. And I, and I ended up with three samples. So I brought them home and I thought, now what am I gonna do? She says, if it's in your house, it will be in your mouth. So I went and I put it in the bathroom in the cabinet underneath the sink and I left it there. And every time I thought about it, I felt so proud of myself. And I thought, <laughs> Nanner, it's in my house and it's not in my mouth. I'm super woman, right. right? Right. But one day, a whole year later, one day something triggered me. And I don't remember the trigger, but I remember what I did. 
and I went and got that candy. It was somewhat moist. It probably wasn't that healthy to eat, but I had elevated that candy to be such a prize. You see, I made it be the best thing out there that I ate all three pieces. <laughs> You know, right. so the, the secret really is not to have it in your house. Yeah, and um, Chef AJ, if if somebody's listening, you don't know about her. Uh, she's got a great YouTube channel. She's a woman who describes herself as having really had food addiction issues yeah. her whole life, was overweight, and it wasn't, I don't remember, was it when she was 40 or 50, she became plant-based? Somewhere yes. along that point. point she had, yeah, she had been vegan for all, most of her life. <clears throat> But not oh, whole I didn't food. realize that. Yeah, she had been vegan, but not whole food, and she didn't know about the fat and the right. oil. Right. Yeah, so but so she, Chef AJ is a great person to watch. Uh, uh, yeah. If you're, especially when you're wanting to lose weight and you want to do this uh, plant-based diet in the most effective manner possible, Chef AJ's got a lot of uh, great yeah. videos and advice on that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that helped, and so I had the. There are things in my house that I would not have had, you know, like maybe say the tortillas or peanut butter and some of the other things that Ben can enjoy because he's so skinny now. I mean, it's not a problem for him, but those things don't call to me. So I don't have anything in the house that, I mean, I have my food and it's ready. Right. And, and if, I, if I get hungry, I mean, I can sit down now and just eat a sweet potato in my hands, you know, and feel like, oh my, it's a custard. Oh, it's a candy. It's, you know, sometimes I'll peel the juice that comes out of the sweet potato, I'll peel it off of the, the paper, you know, and, and that's my candy. You know? <laughs> Hopefully that's an organic sweet potato if you're eating the oh, sweet yeah. potato. <laughs> yeah, right. Good, yeah. We, yeah, we buy organic potatoes. We're mostly organic in our house, but yeah, yeah I, I love to eat the peel because there's lots of nutrients in the peel, but yeah. Yeah, I like it if it's organic. I do too, yeah. So and, let's, and, let's talk about your successes, you know, okay. just those health successes. So share with us, you know, the weight, and then you talked about some of the things with uh, med med uh, prescription drugs. So share a little bit about that with us. Oh, this is fun. Okay, well, I, my highest was 282, and recently I went back through my records, and I thought I only weighed uh, 282 one time. And as I look back on my charts where I kept track of my weight, I weighed that three times. Wow. So I get up there and then down to maybe 250 or whatever, up and then down and up and down. So I was really tired of the yo-yo thing. But anyway, so I was 282 before, but I only count my 130 or now 133 pounds from July 13th of 2016, because that's the weight I was when I started this program. Right. So I, I don't want to count anything else. So when I started, I was 257. Now I'm down to 124. So I've lost like 133 pounds. I've lost, I weigh less than what I've lost. And Do you know you what know your BMI is? My what? Your body BMI? mass index? Yeah, I looked at it the other day. It was, it's been a while. I think it was 21. That's like fantastic. <laughs> yeah. And I want, I called my doctor today because with this COVID thing, I can't get my labs. So I want to get my labs done because I do have my labs from 2016. Um, but I, you know, I had high blood pressure. I was pre-diabetic. I had thyroid. I was on thyroid and lithium for over 30 years. Um, I had GERD. I had diverticulitis. I had um, constipation. Um, I had sleep apnea, uh, high cholesterol, and my eyes were deteriorating. So after, after one year, instead of losing the 70 pounds, I lost 80. Then I lost about 25 the next year, and then 25 again the next year. So that's kind of how the weight loss went. But then after, after one year, let's see, no, in two years, I was off of all my medications. And the last, all, yeah. of, all of them. Yes. Yes. And, no and I just, again, it's important for us to remember your age, right? Because oh, yeah. it's not like you're a 30 year old. Right. Right. I mean, we're, when we age, you know, our bodies, you know, become more vulnerable and certain things happen with age. And nobody, like in their 70s, gets off medicine. I mean, that is just. Fantastic. Yeah. Love it. And, and it was so neat because I got off my sleeping pills and my pain medications and then I was on statins. And then I had my thyroid, levoid thyroxine for my thyroid. And that one, like I said, been 30 years. So what happened is as I lost weight, I, my highest uh, dosage was uh, 112 
and then it came down to 100, and then it came down to 75, and then it came down to 50. So that was the last one to go. So I talked to my doctor in July of 2018, and I said, you know, that's the last one to go, and I want to be med free. And I said, what would happen if I went off that altogether? And he said, well, he said, worst case scenario is you might gain some weight back, or you might not have as much energy. And I said, well, this is my body. I threw my body into McDougal's program as an experiment. I'm willing to experiment again. I'm the owner of my own uh, system here. And so I said, why don't we do a test? And he said, okay. He said, um, you can go off of it and we'll do your labs again in six weeks. So when that time came back around again, I mean, I lost even more weight from what I had been and I had all the energy. So I didn't go back on. And in the meantime, I had taken Dr. McDougall's starch certification course. And then I went, Ben and I and two other friends, we went to see uh, Dr. McDougall at his 3D program. And I got to meet him in person and have him sign the magic book. And uh, I talked to the doctor there too. And he said he wouldn't put me back on either. On the, he wow. But I, 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 I hesitate to magnify that because I know there are so many people who like me have been on it for so many years. And I don't know other people's uh, thyroid condition. Some people have had radiation, some people have had surgery. So I don't like to hold that out as a possibility for everyone, you see. But it did work for me. Right, and, and, you know, and it's an important point you're making because uh, there are plenty of instances, and the doctors will talk about this, where you could be eating this diet you know, so well, you know, paying a very close attention, but some labs may not go in the area you want because we're all different and it's yeah. just how things are. And Dr. Esselstyn will even say there'll be some people who will eat a whole food plant-based diet the way he prescribes it, like for those, you know, advanced heart patients, uh -huh. no oil, you know, no extra this, extra that. And they still might have higher cholesterol and some people will have to still go on a statin, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, as Dr. Kim Williams, cardiologist, always loves to say, you know, statins are great, but let's first try the lifestyle change because for so many people, that may just be simply enough. And then if it's not enough, then we can add the pharmaceuticals, you know, that we know will help, but it doesn't make sense to start with them. Right. Right. You should yeah. start with the, the actual behaviors that really create health, which is yeah. what you did. And I think as I look back, I know it was the weight loss that drew me in. That was my critical thing. So I had to have that for me to find the program and to do it. But as I reflect, I, I, I want to tell people in my group, you know, get the food down first, you know, because it takes a long time to get over those food addictions that we have and those drawings for that food. And the food is the important thing. And the weight loss will follow. I mean, if you stay within those four food groups, you are going to lose weight. But we always think of weight loss as a diet. But what happens when we diet? We get to a certain point, we get to that wedding or we get to that event that we wanna lose weight for. And when that's over, we start going back to the food that put the weight on to begin with. So we're back at square one again. The yo-yo goes up and down and up and down. So um, I, I really try to say, don't focus so much on the weight loss. You know, kind of get your body used to it being acclimated to healthy food. And right, that's such an important point because yeah. if this is about health for life. Yes. It's, it's not for a moment because no. it can derail you, right? So I would like to just ask you, you know, early in the interview, you talked about that doctor you had. He said, nah, it ain't gonna do anything. And you found a new doctor. So right. when you found a new doctor, did this? Did your other, you know, new person, did, did they actually, encourage and support you in this? Did they know anything about it? Oh, uh, that's why I went to him. Ah. Because he was a plant-based diet and he even has written his own book. He had a heart attack when he was in his early 40s, as did his father. And in fact, Chef AJ just interviewed him this week and I was so proud to watch my that? doctor. Pardon? Who is that? Dr. Mosquita. Mosquita? Mosquita. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I'm not familiar with that name. Yeah. So that's great that you were able to find him. Did you find him because you went to one of these websites where you could find plant-based doctors or was it just coincidence? No, I, I'm trying to think. I think someone, someone at the gym 
um, was telling me that he was doing a program, kind of a study for diabetes and that he was plant-based. So he wasn't really accepting new patients. But I thought if I could just have a consult with him. And so I called and made a point for a consult and he fell in love with me. Aww, <laughs> and I fell in love with him, you know, because he knew I wouldn't be knocking on his door. I wouldn't be much trouble. Right. And, and he was so thrilled. He's, and so it's, it's been a wonderful relationship and he, he just, he thinks I walk on water, you know, he's I'm just sure, I'm sure, I'm sure he, he tells everybody about you. Yes. Yes. So I had to, I had last year, it was kind of fun, uh, through Dr. Bernard's work and with him being on Women's World magazine, um, they made it, they were looking for someone who was over 70, had lost over 70 pounds and was doing a whole food, whole food plant-based diet. So last August 5th, I was on the cover of Woman's World magazine. Isn't that fun? Yeah, that was fun. And then right. a girl, a girl to Jim said, Esther, you ought to start a group, you know, because she was very obese. And I said, no, I don't need to start a group on Facebook because I just need to tell people what doctors to listen to, what YouTubes to watch, and what books to read. I don't need to reinvent the wheel. And she said, no. She said, you need, you need to start because people will know you and it will make a difference. So I thought, well, maybe. So I went home and thought about it and I thought, okay. So I started Esther's Nutritional Journey. And, it and this is on Facebook for everybody. Yes. Esther's Nutritional Facebook. Journey on Facebook. You can find right. it. And so I don't just accept everybody because I'm not about the numbers. I want people to first of all know what their goals are. And so I ask them to declare, what is your goal? And the second question I ask before I accept them is, have you watched Forks Over Knives? Have you watched The Game Changers? Have you watched um, What the Health? You know, and, um, and now I have added, have you watched my interview with Chef AJ and my interview with Gene Schumacher? Because if they've watched any of these, I know they're kind of in the groove already and they're ready to listen and so forth. So even if they haven't watched the videos, that's okay, but I want them to have to take a baby step, which is to answer two questions. Right. And I'm happy to say now we have 5,800 in the group. Wow. So it has, it has just really grown and I, I love them. I love these people. And every night now I do a video from my yard just to give them a little pep talk. And I, then in March, I wrote a book. Uh, it's called- And I see, I see it sitting oh. there. I actually had a picture oh. of it, but as long as I see it sitting there, I'll show it to everybody. Oh, okay. I don't know. Is that so? And when did you, when did you finish that? Uh, March 4th. No, I started it January 14th and it was all done March 4th. Of what year? This year. Oh my gosh, that, that quickly. I mean, it just falls into place, everything. Wow. It was wonderful. And what I did is I, every day on Facebook in my journey, I, I think about a word, you know, and then I develop that into a story. And so I have this called word for today, you know. And so I did that all last year and somebody said, you know, in my group said, you need to write a book. And I said, well, you know, you're, you're already getting my words free. I mean, just read my book on, in my journey every day. You know, you don't, why would you pay for a book when you're already reading it? So what I did is I went back, oh, and my niece said to me, well, it'd be a shame to have your words disappear into the ethernet, you know, or into the, into the space. And I thought, well, yeah, I do put a lot of thought into it. So I went back and I recaptured all my words for the whole year. So um, that was, I mean, it took time, you know, but because that content was already done, I just put that together in a book and I submitted it on um, March, on January 14th and March 4th, it was done. And where can people find your book? Well, if they want a signed copy, they can write to me and request one. Or if they uh, want to just go on Amazon or Barnes and Nobles or the publisher was Balboa Press. So they can go there. So anyway, and if they want to see if they like it before they buy it on Amazon, when you see the picture of the book at the top, there's a little arrow and you can click on that and you can read, oh gosh, a whole month worth of words free. Oh, you wow. know, if it's not for you, don't get it. You know, it's better to get McDougall's program than my book because that's a how-to book. Whereas mine is more inspirational and motivational. And reflective, I think, of your journey. Yes. Yeah. yeah, my journey and just helping people think, 
you know, what do you think about this? And have you ever considered this? And I kind of have a fun way with words. So it's, it's really been, oh, and then every night when I do my video from home, I read that uh, word for the day that's in my book for that day, you know, so cool. that's fun. So I'd so, like to just um, go back a little bit uh, and just talk about um, Ben's experience. And if you could just share a little bit about that, you know, what, what was his feeling in the beginning and how did that change that he said, you know, I, I'm going to go along with this. Well, it was, it was real gradual. Like I said, he wanted to wait until all the meat in the freezer had been eaten up. Uh -huh. And then we always had the family over for Christmas, Thanksgiving and Easter. And that was a hard thing, you know, because uh, feeding our family with the food that they loved and with me eating differently was kind of a challenge. But after that last Easter, we were, you know, we would send home the extra non-healthy food with our kids because uh, we didn't want to waste it. But after that was gone, then he said, you know, I don't think I'm going to buy any more eggs. And then he says, you know, I don't think I'm going to buy any more cheese. And then as time went on, he finally said, I don't think I'm going to buy any more oil. So it was very gradual as we used up the supply that was in the house and he just really quit. And, and then we were going to the gym quite regularly and he was working out and he would only weigh like once a month. And I mean, literally the weight just fell off of him. I mean, it, almost scary. It was so fast. Wow. And, and, was, and, and he hadn't experienced that before in that way? Oh, no. He weighs, when he, at his highest was like 320 at one point. And then when we started this, he was down to 220. Um, and, when, and now he's down to 160. And he's six foot tall. And so, I mean, he, so he can pretty much eat. He doesn't eat, he still doesn't eat, you know, animal or dairy or oil. Um, but he, he can have more nuts than I would eat. He, you know, has some peanut butter. He has more avocado and he certainly is maintaining his weight loss. He's just a champ. He was, so, so he can five, do a little bit more of the, uh, the higher fat plant. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. It's still whole food plant based, yeah. but it's the healthy, but high fat food. Yeah. yeah and he, and, he and, eats some bread, he eats some bread and he eats some tortillas. So if he had a group, People would much rather eat what he eats than what I eat. But as an older woman, you know, you have to realize what you have to work with and what it's going to take to get the results you want. And like Chef AJ used to say, you know, if you can get the results you want by not being as restrictive, go for it. But once you determine what it takes to get the results you want, that's where you are. Yeah, that's very smartly stated like that. So yeah. when, when he, I just want to, when he, you know, first said, nah, I'm not going to buy eggs anymore. Was it like, did he give you a, you know, did he have a reason that he shared with you? Like, is your, is his thinking has evolved? I mean, I'm just kind of curious. Yeah. Well, I think he would say that uh, the reason why he would give it, of course, he started during all this time, you know, he's hearing my videos. I mean, not my videos, but videos that we watched, you know, but you know, uh, what the hell and So this is all coming in secondhand to him, like secondhand smoke, but it's getting into his brain. And so, you know, I think that made a part. And then he just really realized, he started thinking about mammals, you know, like gorillas and orangutans and how we have a different stomach. And he came to the conclusion that we were never intended to digest meat like we have become. So he kind of looked at it from an evolutionary standpoint. And then, um, and then, of course, we started realizing how contaminated a lot of the animal foods are, you know. But I should just ask him, <laughs> what else would you say, Ben? I think you pretty much got oh, it. Oh, he thinks I'm kind of covering it. Um, but yeah, and then he started getting the results, too. And, and he feels now, he says, I wasn't really trying to lose weight. But, you know, when you restrict all those other foods, it just happens. Yeah. The, the hard part is, you know, as you know, with, is with families and going to restaurants and socializing and being the odd man out, you know. But, and so how, how, how does that work out for you? How do you handle that? Well, what we do with our family, because we, I tend to be a preacher and I just want to tell everybody what to do, you know. Well, I mean, because I'm so excited, you know, right. save my life. So what we do is a compromise. We'll, we'll, instead of having them here, we'll have to bring food into the house that I don't want here. Um, we'll take them out for dinner now. So we have a fairly large family and we'll go to a restaurant that's 
by Seth Tool, and by that I mean offers vegan entrees as well as the standard American diet. And so we take them there and they can order whatever they want, but we get to order our vegan food. Mm -hmm. So we've done that several times with different restaurants. So that's, that's the compromise. But uh, the really great thing is just this week, my son and his wife visited. I haven't seen them in two years and uh, they're eating this way. Really? So it was so easy in the house just to pull out food and eat it. We didn't have to do any menu planning. I did the, the special thing I had was fresh raspberries and strawberries and blueberries and blackberries. I, I mean, that was a treat to have all, all of them at once, you know. And you just now, have to- they're, they're eating this way. Did they do this before you did or after? No, I interviewed her on my little video uh, night before last. It was so cute. And she said, well, I told her about the program four years ago and she was a nurse in the Navy. So eating healthy, she thought it was, she was eating healthy always. And, but she thought healthy was buying grass-fed beef, buying organic chicken, buying organic mm. cheese and all that. And so uh, after about two years of knowing what we were doing, or, you know, but she wasn't that far along, she said last the other night when I asked her, she said, well, she started having some health issues while she was in the Navy, and it was really important for her to be in good health. And so then that's when she started going more the vegan way. And she says, and now from the bottom of my heart, I can say I'm vegan, you know? Yeah. <laughs> my so son. After I want to just ask you, like, you know, what does it feel like to be in your body now? Because it's, it's so very different than what you had experienced for, I would imagine, a good part of your life. Oh, yes. And what does it feel like to be you now? It feels wonderful. And I feel more confident. I feel like I can conquer anything. I feel spiritually that I'm, my mind is less cluttered. The, the brain fog is gone. I feel alert. I feel, well, Dr. Mosquito said, you know, you've taken 20, 20, you know, 10 or 20 years off your life, you know, and I'm alert, alive, awake and enthusiastic. And um, it feels good to wear a size six instead of a 26 like I did yes. <laughs> when my son got married. It feels good to go into a regular store and just buy off the rack or buy a Costco, whatever, or even a thrift store. Um, it just feels wonderful to have found my solution. I mean, I had dieted for 50 years tried every diet and and then you feel like such a failure you know every time you try one you slide back and you a lot of self-condemnation so i try to tell my people there is no guilt only learning that's every step if you slip it's not a big deal learn from it learn what sets you off and try to rectify it and go on love yourself you know and now it's funny because when i watch my videos each night i wonder who is that person Right, and let me ask you, I mean, so I think it's just so fantastic, you know, how you, you, you did this at your age, and then you went public to share your experience and, uh, you know, your Facebook group, your, your videos, your book, and I'm, I imagine you've inspired, you know, a number of people, and that just makes me wonder, has, I mean, I have no doubt you've inspired people, but what I don't know is if you've heard their feedback. So have oh, you gotten that from anybody? You know, is there uh, any little story you can share with us about you're inspiring anyone? Yeah, talk about a dopamine hit. That's my new hit. Yeah. My, my people are wonderful. They tell me I saved their life. They, they're telling me what I was telling Dr. McDougall. They're saying, and I do it so simply, you see, because a lot of these people, they've already been in all these other groups. They've already listened to all these podcasts. And I think, then why are they coming to me? why hasn't the answer already been evident, you know, and I don't know the answer for everyone, but for some of them, it's the simplicity, I think, that I present, that they think, I can do that. I don't have to worry about finding a fancy recipe. I don't have to worry about having all these spices in my house that I may never use again. You know, it's just cooking the food and eating it. And I had one person criticize me saying, oh, I should use white plates. Things look better. And I thought, you know, <laughs> Come on, it's all about simple. You know, you know, people are trying to minimize these days, right? Minimization is so important. Well, we can do that with our food too. And then I try to say, you know, is 
it's fuel. The cow eats the same grass every day, whether it's Christmas or Easter or whatever, you know. And but back to the compliments, yeah, I I'm mean, so blessed. I mean, some people have made. Uh, I haven't asked people specifically to review my book and leave a comment, but some have. And but every day there's a response, and I answer everything on Facebook. So we're a tight family, and yeah, they're they're very happy and. I don't have anything printed out to read to you, but uh, they say, I just didn't know it could be this easy. And then uh, that's just fantastic. It, you're just doing such wonderful work helping yeah. other people. So we're gonna get to the end here. And you know, I, I wanna you know, um, mention that you know, a lot of people, especially when they're older, they're always like, I could never do that. You know, you can't, what's that saying? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You know, you know, I'll I'll often be talking to people. I hear they've got issues, and I'll share this, and they'll go, "I can't do that." And yeah. so, you know, when you meet people like that, I mean, I know we've been kind of talking, but if just to kind of sum it up, how you know would you address that? You know, to somebody, you know, you meet around your age. You know, there's no way I've been doing this my whole life. How could I ever possibly change? And what yeah. what would you Tell that person. Well, there's, there's several tacks that I take. And one of them is um, if I feel like they're really resistant, I might, and if they see the value in veganism or whole food, you know, you might start with, with one meal a day. You know, and someone else said, I could do that. I could do oatmeal and fruit every day. And I said, great. Then start patting yourself on your back because you're one third vegan. You're one third there. Yeah. You know, be happy about what you can do. And Dean Ornish was great too. He, the thing that I remember from him is, what are you willing to do? So if I were really to counsel someone, I would say, let's talk about what are you willing to do and let's start there and then build on it. And, but, the, but what I want people to do is to do it um, severe enough so that they get the results that they want. So that's the motivation. Because without that, you could say, well, it's not working, you know. But anyway, so I think starting one meal a day or one day a week, or if somebody's really, really in trouble, I say, would you like me to pray that God will send you more pain so you'll have a crisis? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it often takes a crisis for right. people to make a change. And I wish we could learn from each other before a crisis occurs. And then there are other people, I have people, I have siblings that are not doing this and they're quite sick. But... It's, and that's hard, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know what you've experienced. I know I, we, we have family members same way, you know, or friends. It's just yeah. so hard to watch when you know people are not in the optimal health position. And Yeah, and I think it helps if people can find their joy somewhere outside of food. Because if your life is boring and food is the only thing that lights you up, guess what? That's what you're going to do. You know, whether it's eating out socially or rich food at home or whatever. But I say try to find out what your gift is and try to share that gift. Try to be a bigger person. Try to let whatever's coming to your life out, you know, and circulate your prosperity and circulate your wisdom and circulate uh, things in your life to spread that. And it's just every person, if I talk to a religious person, I can go into my religious mode. If I talk to a Buddhist, I could say, well, you know, being a monk would be so easy. All you need is rice and a robe, you know? And so there's various paths to meet someone where they're at. Um, but I just think if they can learn to be quiet and listen to that voice within them and have that be there, what do you want in life? What do you really want? Are you willing to pay the price? And Doug Lyle is great as a psychologist. He's, he's, uh, he works with Dr. McDougall. And he says everything is a cost benefit analysis decision you know but the hard thing is people don't know what the benefit is until they do it right they can hear these success stories but it's not real to them and it can be discounted like oh yeah well that's whatever you know right right so just trying to get someone to really identify what they want in their life if they're happy the way they are then then it's maybe not the right time you know so, right. I mean, for you, the partly that right time came when it's like, oh my God, I won't be able to travel. My knees are yeah. killing me. I have to get surgery. I got to lose weight. And so that was for you, like that moment of crisis. Yeah. Yes, it was. 
of traveling was so important to you. Right, it really was. It was like taking away my freedom not to travel. Because yeah. we, yeah. And then having the answer come to me at the same time, you see, it was just wonderful serendipity. Right. You know, I had the book, got the plan. It was something new, totally different from anything I'd ever done and was ready to ready to go then. But right. So, so it sounds like you're just going to keep doing what you're doing, right? Yeah, you're going to keep doing public advocacy. You have any other plans yet that we haven't heard about? Uh, yes, I just got invited by Dr. Bernard to be on his What's it called? His the live? exam room? Yeah. All right. Week, yes. Week, Great. I listen week. to that all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's a week from Monday. Oh, so, wonderful. I'll so be that, listening to you while I'm doing my walk, you know, in the oh, morning. Oh, good. Yeah, that's <laughs> it's and so then, hot here that, you know, you got to get up early and, and walk. And I don't go to the gym now because of COVID. So, yeah. but yeah, that, I, that's great, Esther. And, yeah, and I had some cards made up, and I don't call them business cards because I don't have a business. I'm all about just passing it on free, you know. But every I keep them in my bag at the gym. I go to swim about an hour a day, and if I meet somebody there, I give them a card, say, "Well, check out these videos, you know, check out these wonderful things that are there." And I just want to inspire people, and you know, it's there's so many wonderful people out there demonstrating this, and it's the food, it's the program, it's not me. I just was the guinea pig that put it to the test. Yeah, well, and, and, and of course, as I said, you're a shining example. Before we end, I'm just gonna share those pictures with uh, folks again, uh, just to, to remind what how beautiful your uh, weight loss was and with Ben, there there's the pictures again, I, where I'm blocking, I don't know if I can move these there, let's see. Uh, the, from the three, the middle one again is when uh, just before Esther started this change and uh, you can kind of see where she is today. So I just think it's a, a wonderful example of all that. Uh, so uh, before we close Esther, I just want to give you a chance if there's anything else you would like to share that maybe we didn't get to or final last words or your little elevator speech to yeah. hear somebody if you have that, you know, is there anything else oh I, I think what I want to say just speaking off the top of my head is start with loving yourself right where you are think of all the things about yourself you do love and magnify those and give yourself credit for those because it's easy to let past failures uh, of slipping up on a program to derail you and make you want to start over so love yourself and acknowledge all your skills and what you have to offer people because a lot of people love you just as you are, you know? And then you can go on from there. And then I would say stress eating for health rather than focusing on the diet because diet has an end point. We lose weight and then we go off of the diet and gain it back. But whatever you can give up for life, that would be a, a big thing. And make that list long, strong, longer and longer all the time. Like maybe at first you could say, well, I can give up red meat, but I'm not ready to give up chicken. Okay, own that and be there. And then as you start feeling better, say, I think I can take the next step. Okay, next step might be giving up chicken or eggs or cheese or oil or processed food. But you don't have to be as, as um, radical as I have been before you'll see results. So try it for, you know, three weeks and, and put yourself to the test. Then you'll know. And you can decide. Be your own boss. Don't let somebody else tell you what to do. Right. Uh, just own yeah. that. And That's great know. advice. And it reminds me, you know, what you were talking of, Joel Furman's book, Eat to Live yes. instead of Live to Eat. Yes, yes. And just the more you eat the good food, the more you're going to appreciate it, you know. And be thankful for where it comes and take time to really look at what you're eating and, and masticate slowly and just enjoy it. Make a big thing out of it like we used to go, woo, well, this is great, whatever, you know. But take time to really appreciate the good, healthy food and you'll be on your way. Right. Well, Esther, it is just a pleasure to speak uh -oh. with you. I, I, I'm so excited for everything you've done. I'm, I'm thrilled about your public advocacy and that you're helping people and your message is getting spread more. And I'm, I appreciate that you allowed me to speak for you with you uh -huh. for this long so we could kind of get an in-depth understanding of your story. And, you know, I, I hope some other people, you know, uh, 
will watch it and uh, I'll be, uh, when I start teaching a class in the fall, it's actually for older people. It's oh, this great. called uh, Ali Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. It's like a continuing ed program for older people and it's peer to peer teaching and I teach for free as well. It's, I just call uh -huh. it community service. I, I, I tell anybody, you know, I'm always telling people on Facebook, you, you want somebody to help mentor you, coach you, I'll help you. I won't even charge you because I just want to see you succeed. I just, you know, I, I think it's so important and it's this way of eating really makes a difference for people's health. And of course, we know there's other reasons that are wonderful to be plant-based as well. The climate, sure. the planet, the animals, okay. whatever your reason is. But uh, I just thank you so much for sharing your time with us. And uh, uh, we'll see you on the channel. And yeah. until I see everybody else next time, I'm Denise from Happy Vegan Couple. And check out our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and try some of our cooking videos. We got some really good ones. And uh, until I see you all again, everybody go plant-based because that's the greatest thing to do. And maybe, you know, when you're going to be up in your 70s, you don't have to wait to change like what Esther did. You can already be there and you'll live like way more years, you know, aging gracefully rather than being that person, you know, that didn't quite make it. So anyways, Esther, thank you so much again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right.